Welcome to Crunch Time, a program dedicated to helping you survive the crunch times in your life, whether they are caused by accidents, natural disasters, poverty, economic recession, depression, or all-out economic collapse, or whether they are caused by your realization that today's food supply is being contaminated by artificial fertilizers, pesticides, and genetically modified organisms, and over-processing of crops into what can hardly be called food. We want to help you through the crunch times in your future by teaching you what we have learned about organic gardening, food storage, and food preparation. We'll bring you into our kitchen and into our garden and share with you what we have learned, hopefully, before your crunch times arrive. Now here is Chef Francois. Okay, I've been working on wiring this, rewiring this panel. And as you can see, I've got two wires going from one to the other all the way around. Now, all the gray wires are positives. Because they're on the positive side of each terminal, which is the left one on the top and the right one on the bottom. All say positive along there. All the black wires are on the negative side. Got a little extra wire right there. Uh, now, when it's time to wire this to the battery bank, I can tap in to any of these connectors I want to. The uh, loop goes all the way around, so if there's a bad connection somewhere, the electricity can go around the opposite direction to get to where it needs to go. So there's a safety feature there. Diodes are all in still. And now I'm going to cover up the panels. So looking at them inside, we've got the positive terminals, the negative terminals, the diode. Everything's tight. All the wires are secure in these little thingies. And now I'm going to put all the covers back. So I've got one panel rewired over here. I've taken the plywood from it, dropped this panel here, and put the plywood in front of that because I want to wire that one up next so I can put it back up in place because that is where we're going to put the battery box and the inverter. I'm going to build a little shed right underneath here. And it's going to go right here. It's going to be basically a box about this high and with a cover on it that lifts and be protected by the snow by the uh, panel. So, go visit the chicks and then maybe go home, take a break. It's pretty hot. To build my battery box, which is going to be right in this area under this panel once I tip it up. But before I tip it up, I've got to dig some channels. I have untangled some wire and I've made two sets of wires long enough to go from way into this box into this conduit over there up up here and up there and into the electrical boxes so I can bury that and come up inside the box Got the same thing over here, except I got twice as many. Got enough to go over there, up to here, and then out in both directions, all the way to there and to there. But actually, they only have to go up into this box and over and up into that box. So whether I come up here and over or no I'll probably run the wires right through that way and then up into the next boxes and uh, I've got to dig this but before I do I want to get some PVC cement and glue these together so that when they're underground they're not going to get any water hopefully the pipes together both the one that goes in that direction and the one that goes in this direction. I've already dug this trench 
laid it down in there in the proper place and I have uh, partially buried it and I've got to finish burying it and then we'll have connection between the battery box and the solar panels. Alright, it is blistering hot today. Hotter than it's been all summer almost. Except for maybe a couple hours. But with the grapes that were ripe on my grapevine, I made some grape juice. And here is one of the varieties. This is the lighter variety, not the Concord, but the, the light pink ones. And I just put a little bit of grapes on the bottom, one tablespoon of sugar, and boiling water. Closed it off. Notice the pop indicates that it was sealed. Oh, that is so good. And when I'm done, I still have the grapes to eat. Well done. All right, we got one section buried. Just finished packing it down. There. Now, dig this other one over here and bury that. We'll be ready to put our floor in for our battery box. Well, I've got the second conduit dug and set in place and partially buried. I've got the floor to the uh, battery box built. Got a landscape timber on that end, one in the middle, one on this end, or one on this side. Go one all the way across on that end where the pipes came up with my 45 degree angle. I drilled a hole so the wires came right up through the floor here and here. And on this end, I've just got the planks just set where they belong. And I'm going to fill it in with planks on the outside. But i got to cut this off again. It's too long. Got to have plywood going over the edge of it. So I've got to mark it again and cut it shorter. Well, I've cut my end pieces, so they're only 14 inches high on the back side, 17 inches high over on this side, and then I'm going to screw them to these posts. They're longer than the plywood is wide, so we can screw them to the post, and then I'll screw the back piece on, the front piece on, and then we'll hinge the top piece. Well, I've got the box built used piece of landscape timber on the back corners piece of uh, fur and strip on this these front corners now I'm going to build the top piece so that it'll overlap everything and cut out notches for the four corners and it'll just sit there 
Now I can lock it down. I could hinge it, but uh, for now, we're just gonna let it stick out. Uh, what was it, inch and a half on the back? Inch and a half to two inches on the back, and uh, two to two and a half on the front. It'll be weather tight. All right, I have finished the box. What the battery box looks like from this direction. Probably should paint it green so it matches the, the grass. And uh, start hooking it up. I got two panels I can hook up now. And start charging the batteries. Well, I've got all the batteries set inside the box. Somewhat the way I think I'm going to want to keep them. And I have painted it grass green. Or somewhat close to grass green. So it'll kind of hide amongst all the clutter on the back side of this. At the edges of the plywood and everything overhanging so that all the water will run right off and uh, looks pretty good. I like well it. I've collected 13 eggs today. I was afraid I wasn't going to get up over a dozen. Without this fence it is hard to chase those chickens into that coop. But I got them in. Battery box underneath over there looks pretty good. About the right color. Oh, it's been very windy today. And I'm thinking these seed heads are getting stripped by something. So I should probably harvest these seeds, at least on the ones that are falling down just break the heads off. And bring them home. So I don't lose them all to animals. Same thing up here. Looks like some of those are, a couple of them are nice and thick and full, but the others are all fluffed out and hardly anything on them. I'm not planting that kind again. It doesn't look too good. This kind here looks pretty good. The dough stage is what they're in now. Not completely hard yet. Good morning, chickies! Here comes the balloon! Okay, our battery box has got batteries in it. I'm probably going to slide them down this way a little bit yet, to the left. And it's got the inverter, got a board across the back that all the uh, 
all the uh, controllers are going to go on and uh, that may be in the middle because those over there are a little shorter and got to reach but uh, this cable right here is going to be what goes down the middle and then branch off to all these batteries to get uh, our battery bus well I've been working on this box about a half a day now and I've got the inverter mounted on the wall and from the poles of the inverter I've got this huge wire going to three banks of batteries you may have counted them The top boxes are still not being used very much. Yeah, they like the seeds. Hi guys. Boy, this box number one gets a lot of business. Oh, yeah. Wow. Look how big that one is. My favorite one. Come look how big this one is. Oh, oh my god. It looks like that's a like triple yolk. Where the heck did that come from? It wouldn't surprise me if that's a triple yolk. Is there such a thing? Is there sure. Such a thing? Another double oh yolk. My god. Oh god. jeez. Black ones are so pretty for you. What's that? Just, what? The black ones are so pretty. Yeah. Have you found the limper? No. Is it a black one? Wow, there's one, two, three, four big eggs out of this. Five, really, but four that look like they're doubles. Yeah. What's this little light going on here? That That's the, uh, the pig repeller. Otherwise known as the night guard. Oh, okay. That's the predator scarer awayer. <laughs> According to the American theory, it looks like the eye of another predator in the in the dark. It looks like they just turned their head and and looked at them. And to the Chinese, um, which is Shao's. It looks like fire. No, according to the oh, according to, according to the uh, the ad in AliExpress. Ah. Okay. You like that black sorghum seed? Oh, you don't have to be mean to her. I like the white one so much. Well, I've got 24 batteries hooked up. I'm not hooking up this last one. It'll be a spare for now, and if I add some more on, it'll be in this direction. I'll put some more, either bigger or smaller or the same size batteries off to the right here but I've got everything hooked up to the uh, inverter right there and uh, I got my saw hooked up to the inverter and everything works now I've got to hook up the panels through controllers that I'm going to have mounted on the back wall onto batteries. So, we're coming along. Okay, the battery box for our solar system. I have the 24 batteries hooked up that I plan on hooking up. I can add on to it in this direction and in both directions on the side. 
Uh, I've got wires coming in over here from the four panels over there. I got wires coming in over here for these two panels over here. And I got two wires coming down from this panel right here. And I'll have another two coming down over there for that panel over there. So this thing is operating as a battery bank and an inverter. Have not hooked up any panels yet because I need a smaller screwdriver for the uh, controllers. But I will be back tomorrow and hook them up, maybe even later this afternoon. miles per hour average. Well, I'm in the upper watermelon patch and I picked a few crappy um, cucumbers and a watermelon. I'll bring them down here and treat the chickens. Yeah, I bet you they've been eating grasshoppers all day though. They're way out into the fields now where all the grasshoppers were. Look out Adidas! Won't you attack me? You want a treat? Who wants a treat? I got a treat for you! Mm. Ah. I got a treat for you! Texas black sorghum getting really, really tall. It's almost twice as the height of that that uh, greenhouse right there. At least one of them when it's spread out like an umbrella on top. A few of them have fallen over already and I have picked the, uh, the seed heads off and given them to the chickens. There's one down like that already still right now right over here on this side and you can see the two stalks that I had picked them off it's basically in the same area but before the birds get to these I want to make sure I harvest them I saw a whole bunch of starlings on the road back a ways and uh, went right through them and before they get into any of this sorghum, I gotta make sure I protect it. 
Well, the second planting of beans it wasn't intentional, but I had spilled some beans when I harvested them and planted them right in here along with the uh, buckwheat. And it's coming up nicely, better than the buckwheat actually. I gotta harvest these potatoes soon, they're growing up in weeds. And uh, watermelons, I gotta find a, a way to keep them. Or I'm gonna have to sell a bunch because I got like 20 here, 20 over there, maybe 15 up on the upper field. But I trimmed and weeded all the strawberries today. And I'm on my way home. 620. The well, battery box is a little bit more complete. I've got two panels hooked up. I've got the uh, controllers mounted on the board. I've got um, ammeters also mounted. And uh, I can see already that uh, number six, which is this one right here, is putting out oh, 20 amps. My electrical tester onto charge controller number one and it's got 17 volts coming out of the panel 14 volts on the batteries over here on number six which seems to be working fine it's got 14.3 or 14.6 or something like that on the panel and 14 on the battery when I push the button it looks like a B or a six without a top, a B shows up in the the uh, work mode window. And on this one over here, there's just a dot. And right now, there's just a dot here as well. But it's still twitching. And this one has two green lights. And this one here, second light is flashing. So something's wrong. I'll have to go home and find out. Actually there was nothing wrong at all. The first light indicated that the panels were charging and the second light indicated the status of the battery. And flashing means that the batteries are fully charged. I think it's about time I share with you the gospel of Jesus Christ. According to the Bible in Romans 3.23, all of us are sinners, and we do not measure up to God's perfection. Romans 6.23 says, The penalty of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Yes, Jesus came to earth as a man to pay the price for the sins of mankind. Romans 10.13 says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, saved from the penalty of eternal death. The payment Jesus made for our sins is only available to those who believe and trust in his fulfillment of God's promise to save the world from their sins. If you want to take part of the resurrection of life, you must believe and accept the gift of eternal life that Jesus has provided. Or you could reject the gift and take part in the resurrection of damnation unto eternal death. God loves you and has provided a means of eternal life if you will believe and accept the gift. I have accepted and my life has been changed as the Bible tells us it would. I'd like you to consider joining me and all of God's disciples in eternal life. If you want more information, you can email me at crunchtime at roadrunner.com. Until next week, God bless you and yours. And we'll see you again on Crunch Time with Chef Francois.